last piece of the first week week zero of my character discussions uh going into this i'm just gonna say there are spoilers if you are not caught up with the kometsu no yaiba series normally i don't say spoiler warning because i feel like if you're clicking on stuff with uh clear manga panels you know that it's going to be the manga and the mangas are you know generally much farther ahead than the anime but because it's now starting to get really popular because of the success of the anime you know how beautiful it's animated I figured I'd at least give some credit to, you no know, spoiler warning, because I feel like there's going to be a lot of people, you know, getting into it, and they're going to wait till the anime season ends, and then they're going to read it. But, if you are interested still, it's not heavy spoilers, but it's still spoilers. It's nothing that would ruin the series for you, but it does give end to one of the arcs. Now, as the previous two in week zero, which pretty much ended up becoming a theme, even though I, I was just going to wing it for a week zero and ended, up, and ended up having a theme from what I didn't plan, is it was short-lived but very impactfully powerful characters. And what's funny about that is they, they don't even end up being like some huge aspect to the, uh, to the story. They can still be important in... In stature, but, you know, when you look at, like, their position in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to be, like, like, peering over, like, I, I, I did veto for Black Clover. Now, the, the word demon would have worked because, obviously, he was only in for a short period of time in the overall series. But, he, you know, comparing him to Vito, Vito is still, you know, he's got more presence in the series, and I guess, in, in amount he was in the series. But he, you know, Vito was like a... A pretty good mid boss, like in the in the eye of the midnight sun. Obviously, he was he was not he was not the big boss. He wasn't even the actual big boss. We found out licked, and we found out the one we thought was licked was actually Patri. But still, very serious. And we will get that with this guy. This is Gyutaru, Upper Moon Six. And I said, as I said, spoilers. So spoilers going from here on out. Even though there's already some stuff in pictures, but. As they find out in the Red Light District uh, arc of the series, the character that they thought was Upper Moon uh, 6 of the 12 Demon Moons was actually not the case. The Upper Moon 6 was within her body, and the character who they thought was Daki, she actually, you know, is the holder for her older brother, who pretty much just kind of like dwells within her body and, you know, comes out to protect her when, he, when she needs it. Now, he's a really interesting character. Because I've compared Vito and Zero together very right, similar. I, I, I think when you when you look at their parts of the story, they were they weren't the first like arcs where it was like, damn, that was a really good arc. They were I think they were the first like overwhelmingly giant character to really go up against. Uh the difference when you when you kind of compare some of them, like with Zero, though they had like battles prior that were still pretty big. Zero was straight up like you know, Natsu on fight with uh, 1v1. He did get a boost from Jalal, but obviously Jalal wasn't in the fight. And Jalal still gave him power, but, you know, you take away Jalal's, like, huge uh, arsenal and his experience, his intelligence. And you just put it on Natsu, that's just more powerful Natsu. He still was able to overcome him. And then with Vito, it was a big group effort to defeat. And we get that again also here. The differences between them... Natsu, who was 1v1, you know, him versus Zero, but he had a boost. With Vito, it was, you know, the characters are teaming up and they got a good strategy. And with, with Gyotaru, it was just the characters, the main cast, plus uh, the, the sound pillar. Uh, what's his name? I'm trying to remember how to pronounce it. Uzui? Uzu? Ui? I think it's, it's, it's spelled. Uh, it's hard to pronounce some Japanese names. But... All of that against this guy, who was just Upper Moon 6, and it, it took everything that they possibly had to go at this guy. And what's interesting is, like, she was built up, his sister Daki, throughout the entire arc as, you know, gonna be this big, powerful character. She was still really strong, but the surprise was that she was not the actual Upper Moon 6, and it's actually revealed later, because it was believed for a bit that they were Upper Moon 6 together, uh, and the way that they, you know... They fight, you can't kill them unless you cut off both the reds at the same time, or at least, I guess, with the interval. They both have to be beheaded at the same state. I imagine it's not literally heads decapitation at the exact same moment. Plus, they, uh, there was a part in there where they ran off with Daki's head so that, you know, they could cut off uh, Gyotaro's head and they would die. So, you know that right there. But 
Very interesting character. I've always really liked uh, the author of the series, uh, the way that she does hair, because she just, she has that kind of weird blend color. Like, you see, like, pretty much in the anime of uh, what it looks like. And I didn't even remember a lot of the time, because, you know, you read most of the series in black and white, and a lot of the characters, like, you look at them right here, and you're just seeing, like, black. But obviously, you know, black can just be a different color, you know, it's just a series in black and white. But the characters have very interesting color schemes. Like, his is what, it's like black and green, but it's not like, oh yeah, I have black hair with the green locks. It's like weirdly straddled, the design layout of it. And I always really like that, the way, again, the, the, the series does the hair colors. Because it, it, it seems, it, it looks very, like, uh, tantalizing just to kind of peer at. And... It's in a style that you'd think was uh, dyed, just because like how deliberately like you'd have to get like a certain way. Because look at this dude; it literally looks like he had black hair, put a bowl over his head, and then only like dyed up the parts that like weren't covered. But he was fun. He was a very fun character. He had an interesting personality, and I think his difference between Zero and Vito is where Zero was a very powerful villain who was just a classic raw villain, whereas Vito was, you know, a very powerful villain character who we found out wasn't a villain, he's an antagonist because the difference between, like, you know, who was good and bad in, that, in the scenario between the humans versus the elves is purely what side you run. They they weren't like, again, the, the, the devil, the word devil, because he was just malefic, he, he, he relished in just causing agony and, and, and just being a bad guy, whereas Vito and the, like, they wanted peace, they were trying to do good, they thought they were betrayed and they were getting vengeance and, you know, the resurrection of their of their people. And with Kyotaro, interesting because he's a villain and you always get those villains who, their their whole aspect is you're, you want to sympathize with them. You want to get, you know, what exactly made them a villain. And it's a sad story. And you even though they're bad guys, you want to look at them after that and be like, man, it's, that's really rough. Like, at the same time, I feel bad for them and I like them. And up until this point, until this character, just kind of thinking back uh, throughout Kometsu no Yaiba, a lot of the demons were much more sinister, much more villain-like, much more kind of just like presented as bad. Even though that, that's not a bad thing, Muzan definitely has just an all-around like just permeating presence of, of, of charisma, just badass like villain. Like he, he's pretty much like if Aizen and Michael Jackson fused together. Like he, he has that like just very intellectual, like, threatening will kill you without you realizing and potentially make you his servant kind of thing while being just this fine-dressed dude with a hat on and very pretty. But he's very man-pretty. But anyway, you know, Tar is, the, I guess, the opposite of that comp because he's he's renowned for being very ugly within his world. He's got these marks all over his body. He has these jagged teeth. He has these kind of, like, very droopy eyes with heavy bags under them. His skin is white. Uh, he has this kind of, like, very distorted, like, if you, you can see it in this picture right here, his, around his waist, like, his, his body kind of curves in more towards, like, his, uh, his, his skeletal structure, uh, you know, of, like, his hips, and then kind of, like, goes up to his torso, and you see, like, just, like, the, the guy does not look well, and it's not like he was, oh, he became a demon, he's all warped, and he's just ugly, and, and, and this all around the future. He'd always been really ugly since birth, and he just had, like, a shit sandwich from the start. So essentially, like, with his character, he was born from, you know, a, I, I can't remember the top of my head if his mother was a prostitute, or she just was, like, a, uh, like a wait, like a, a servant woman or something. I, that part I don't remember. But she was, you know, the dirt poor, and his mom was already kind of, like, shitty, and she beat him. Because she had tried to kill herself before he was born a lot of the time and failed, and then she tried to kill him a lot of the time. And he pretty much hated life. Like, he, he had, like, uh, as he said, like, every single checkbox and, like, the, the, the thing to insult poor people is. Like, he was dirty, he was ugly, he smelled bad, he had fleas, uh, he had to eat rats and bugs to survive and whatnot. And he just, like, the only thing he found he was good at was fighting. Later on in his life, he discovered he was good at combat. And he became good at the sickle. Like, his, his, pretty much his pride and joy, like, the only, probably the only toy really in his mind, a toy he ever got like growing up was a sickle that a customer like pretty much forgot to take with him after like banging out his mom. But yeah, like his life kind of like switched around when his sister was born because like where he was very ugly and just very 
uh, not nice to look at or be around. His sister just was a all around just pleasant sight, as he kind of like describes it. She she's very pretty. She was very proper. She just gave off this very ladylike aura, and it's actually like he she was like his reason pretty much for living because he you know he loved his sister so much. She saw something to protect and take care of. You know, obviously like he, he discovers he's good at fighting, so he's like, okay, I will keep my sister safe. And he pretty much became a collector. Like he was he was he was a, a pimp pretty much. He was going around making sure people paid up on, like, you know, on, on services with prostitutes. And it was because of his lifestyle, he had this kind of, like, take before taken, you know, make sure you know, kill your enemies before they can kill you kind of, like, set. That kind of, like, warped his sister. Because you find out, like, she doesn't have this, like, proper, like, very, like, um... I, I want to say, like, uh, almost majestic personality. Much more of just, like, um... Kind of like, uh, what is it in the Mulan movie when they describe, like, uh, the the women that the people are going for is, like, they're just, like, proper, they're silent, they're spoken, they speak when spoken to, and they're, they pretty much just have this presence of, of trying to, they're almost like a decoration. It's very much like of a, you're eye candy, but not like a, an all-around just, like, 10 out of 10 bombshell chick. You're much more of just a, a delight. But she had a disgusting personality because of the way that he was, and, you know, he raised her after, you know, their, their mom sucked. And she ended up, like, stabbing out, like, a, a samurai's eye one day when she was, like, 13, and while he was out working. And they killed her and burned her body, and he just came back and found his sister's corpse. And he was just, like, losing it, like, the, the samurai that slashed him in the back from behind. And he just goes and kills uh, the woman that ratted him, that pretty much, like, told the samurai to kill him, because obviously he was going to kill them. Kills both of them. And then Doma shows up, upper rank uh, two of the of the demon moons, and ends up offering them to become demons, docking and become a demon. And, you know, throughout the story, as they were, you know, they're, they, they pretty much are inseparable, literally, like, when they're, they're pretty much merged together. But, um, it, they have this very, like, again, protective, but at the same time, they kind of shit talk each other personality, and there's a really good character moment after they die because they have this kind of like frustrated, like almost falling out where they're just yelling at each other, throwing shade back and forth, and like hating on each other. And when he pretty, they pretty much go on of like how much he's like, I hate you, and he's like, I wish you was never, uh, you know, I wish you were never born, so you know, I I didn't have to deal with all this. I never would have you know gone down this path if if it wasn't for you. And she's just like, ah. You know, I bet we're not even related. Like, they, just bad stuff. And then Tanjiro, like, goes up and, like, covers his, his still talking decapitated head's mouth. And he's like, these aren't the last words you want to say to your sister. This is a lie. You know you need to love each other. You guys shouldn't be fighting like this in your final moments. And then a good part afterwards, because, like, there's, like, a scene, like, where they're pretty much, like, you know, going to the afterlife into hell. And they're just, like, in this void, blacked out, like, realm. And he knows, essentially, like... Which way leads to heaven and which way leads to hell? And his whole mindset is he's like, I'm going to go to hell and I'm going to get my sister to hate me in our final moments to go the opposite direction. And he even says that he's like, don't come near me. I don't want you around me. Go just get as far away from me as possible. Go towards the brighter area. You know, go towards that light like zone. And she ends up just like going with them because like in those last moments, she, you know, she doesn't even though they fight, she doesn't want to leave him. And they pretty much go to hell together, which was a really nice moment. And again, like I talked about, a lot of the villains prior, there, there still were some like more like villains you could kind of sympathize with, like the spider demons. Like they, they, there, there was some sad story stuff there a little bit. But Gyotaro and Daki, I think, oh, real name Ume, but Daki were the first characters in Kometsu no Yaiba that I was just like, Oh my god, I want them to become good. Please somehow sw not die and switch to the good side. I don't care how it happens, just do it. I want them to be, like, continuous in the story. I didn't get that. Like, I, again, I, I I loved the character dynamic. I, I really liked the way they were. He had, like, a lot of good, like, little ticks and, like, character traits. Because, you know, he's a demon. They wounds to them don't really matter unless you cut off their head or whatever. Like, because certain of them have, like, special ways. Not just decapitation. And he actually would get frustrated and, like, claw down his face, like, tear through his eyes and, like, rip open his mouth. Like, he was really uh, jealous of Uzui because he's, like, you know, very powerful, very skilled warrior. He's, you know, people like him. He's got three wives. And this dude who's very ugly had, like, nothing in life other than his sister. You know, he's just very jealous. And 
And it just that, like, aggravation while tearing into him. But at the same time, he was kind of, like, almost polite while mocking them. And all will look just, like, uh, constantly always in, like, a stance or a position where, and posture where he just didn't look cute. And I think that's one of the more interesting things about him versus uh, the other uh, big demons, like the other moons. Because you get some that are, like, very human-like and some that are, like, very non-human clearly like they're like the one that like comes out of jars but gyotaru is very human in appearance other than like you know he's got like markings and sharp teeth rip cage area but he's very humanoid but he doesn't have human-like mannerisms at all and i really like that about him i thought that was a really interesting aspect about his character but at the same time I feel like he was one of the most human just because of that aspect of, you know, his feelings towards his sister. And I think one of the reasons I also really would have wished that he stayed around longer is he had a nice kind of, like, contrast to Tanjiro, the way that he and his sister are, the way that he and his... Him and Nezuko pretty much, like, became and how, you know, she was able to kind of, like, fight off those demon urges because of her brother. And Tanjiro's, you know, fighting for her to eventually cure. Whereas, you know, Taro, you know, him and... uh him and Daki, like, embraced being demons, that, you know, how, what they did to survive, and they used that to, uh, you know, pretty much further their lives, and he even says, like, it, it doesn't matter, uh, and even if his sister was alive or not, like, if she was never born, he would have still became a demon anyway, he just knows that it just seems like an inevitable path for somebody that he was. You know, this video is starting to get a little lengthy, but... Fun character, like, uh, again, he's only in, like, a short chunk of the series. There's only, like, uh, I think it's less than ten chapters, and he only, like, a lot of it is fighting. He's got a couple backstory pieces, and they're still, like, very, very, like, right in your feels, even if there aren't a lot to them. You know, it's such a short span of time, you're really hit right in the, uh, in the emotions with his tail. I think he's got one of the best ones in the series, to be perfectly honest. Like, I think the author's done really well at portraying character stories, whether they're, you know, good guys or bad guys. But I think Kyotaro has one of the most interesting, especially for one that was so short, uh, you know, start to finish executed in, like, the span of a volume. So, other than that, tell me in the comment section below what you think about this. If you aren't into Kimetsu no Yaiba, could this get you into it? If you're into the series and you, you just wanted to know about this character and you, you know, you're only you're just getting into it or you only watch the anime, uh, what do you think about this if you have ended up watching and listening to all this? And, you know, those who, you know, do read the manga, what is your, you know, what are your takes on this character? Do you have similar opinions on him? But other than that, I really appreciate you thumbs up the video, preferring the like button and the subscribe button, and check out my other videos. By that, I appreciate everyone who's subscribed, and I thank you all for listening.